Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In today's video I'm going to do something different to my usual builds and do a bit of a diary piece which gives you a little insight into my creative process. As some of you will know, I've been putting together a nice little Necron army on the side, which led me to build a cool piece of terrain for them. Link above if you want to watch that. I wanted to apply the same care and attention to the bases of my army and show my journey getting there. So first off, I would need some bases. Lots of bases. Check. Next, as a main feature of these bases, I wanted to include some kind of crystals. You can buy ready-made ones from companies like Green Stuff World in a variety of sizes and colours. A great starting point if you don't want all the fuss, but I wanted to try and create my own. I even thought about using real crystal shards, but quickly realised that this would be impractical. I had a good search online and managed to find these silicon crystal moulds. They're a little bigger than I would have liked, but close enough to get started with. I got some resin. This is just some cheap stuff from Amazon, nothing fancy. And some people shy away from using resin because it involves chemicals and at first I was a little hesitant too. But once you get into it, the process is actually pretty simple. It comes in two parts. One is the resin and the other is the hardener. It is mixed to a one-to-one -one ratio and it's suggested that this is done at room temperature. If you're working in a cold environment or during winter, then you can warm the bottles in a bowl of warm water. It can cause some skin irritation and can get messy very quickly, so I recommend wearing some gloves. I take three plastic cups and pour out equal measures into two separate cups. And then combine these two into a third cup. This way the residue of the two chemicals should be relatively equal, or so the theory goes anyway. I then mix these together slowly with a wooden stirring stick for approximately 5 minutes. In previous builds I've just used acrylic paint or inks to colour the resin, and this generally works fine, but I wanted to try some specifically formulated resin tints. I got these from Amazon, again for pretty cheap. I did some colour tests and came up with a recipe of 10 drops of forget-me-not and 3 drops of clover. This gives me a lovely semi-opaque turquoise colour, which matches really nicely to the colour scheme of my Necrons. And if you want to know more about working with resin, then I would like to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. They have a premium membership which allows you unlimited access to courses covering a really wide range of topics from photography or painting to productivity and marketing, to only name a few. I'm constantly surprised at how looking outside of the hobby into different forms of creativity can provide an amazing source of inspiration for different approaches to using familiar materials. For example, I took the course Beginner's Guide to Resin, Intricate Pieces with Simple Techniques by Janaret Vasquez, which more than covers the basics, but gives a brilliant insight into how you can use resin to create any number of wonderful creations. So head over to Skillshare by clicking the link below, and because they are sponsoring this video today, the first 1000 people to use the link on my description or my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, and after that it's very cheap to start your premium membership. Thank you to Skillshare for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. I pour this out into the moulds and let this cure overnight. I found that this left the resin slightly flexible, and yet more than solid enough to remove from the moulds. Having this flexibility meant they were easier to remove and soft enough to cut into smaller pieces. I made the mistake of leaving a pour over the weekend and when I returned on the Monday, the resin was rock solid and very difficult to cut. I didn't realise that this would be such a recipe based process, but now that I had everything worked out, I could really start the production line en masse. I chopped the larger crystals into smaller usable pieces, following the existing contours of the crystals to get shapes that look very natural. 
Next I took some natural earth texture from AK Interactive. This is a pre-mixed texture paste. Great for quickly applying some texture to bases or terrain. Now you can make your own, but as I had a pot, I thought I would use this to help speed things up. I spread this out onto the bases with a small stick, hoping that it would also help bond the crystals to the bases. I added the crystals and blended the edges with a little more texture paste to help with the illusion that they were really embedded into the ground. Then I took some of my basing mix, made up of various small stones, some dirt from the garden, and some grout powder. This gives a really nice mix of different sized elements. I sprinkled this over the texture paste and let everything dry properly. I also got a bit more bold with some of the larger bases for the characters and vehicles, using larger crystals and placed them in ways that would complement the stance of the models. Same process as before. Once dry, I gave everything a good coat of primer. In this case, some black primer from Monument Hobbies. And usually I would just quickly apply this with my airbrush, but because I didn't want to mask each crystal or risk overspray, I opted to apply the primer with a small brush. Often it's just about using whatever process which will work best for the task at hand. With the black applied, I was really happy with how much the crystals popped against the darker background. In a happy accident, using the white texture paste as a foundation for the bases worked out great. Because the crystals are somewhat transparent, having them sit on a white base helps reflect any light just like a real crystal. And against a dark background, they almost look like they're glowing. I then gave the bases a light dry brushing of some burnt sienna, again from Monument Hobbies taking care to not get any paint onto the crystals. Sometimes this involves switching to a smaller brush to get into all the little tight spaces. I followed this with a dry brush of a lighter shade of brown, just focusing on the high points. This helps build in some depth and contrast and because it has a black base, any recesses or areas that I missed still retain lovely deep shadows. I was really happy with progress, but I felt like there was still something missing. So I reached for a favorite of mine, and that is some pigment powder. Again, you can Buy this pre-made from most good hobby manufacturers in a variety of colours. Or do what I did here and crush up some artist's pastels to mix up your own colours. It's important that you use the chalky type of pastels rather than oil-based pastels as the oil-based pastels have a waxy texture and will not work for this purpose. In this case I combined some orange and brown to get a lovely deep orange with some natural variation in colour. For some of the larger bases, I added a few extra bits of shrapnel and debris or barbed wire just to give them a little more detail. And that about wraps it up. I picked up this army in pieces from eBay, had an idea for some fancy bases without knowing it at the time. I embarked on a journey that ended up being a pretty large project. This project is by no means finished and I still have lots of painting to do and will add more models in due course. But for now I'll call it good and show you my progress thus far. If you enjoy this kind of video and would like to support the channel, you can give the video a like, you can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos, and possibly share it with a friend who might find it interesting. For many, bases just mean a bit of sand and a few grass tufts here and there. But with some imagination and patience, you can come up with something that not only looks cool, but also something that is solely unique to your army. Thank you for watching, and enjoy.